and welcome to the last episode of this series of Life Support. The only lifestyle program that tells each and every one of you exactly how to live your lives. That's right. G'day. I'm Todd and if you're looking for a handyman, look no further. Tonight, I'll be returning to the kitchen and showing you all how to prepare a deliciously different delicacy from Japan. Dr. Rudy, delighted to be here. Coming up, I'll be presenting parents with a practical procedure to improve your child's posture permanently. Penny, I'll be giving you young single mums the drum on how you can use your new baby to get ahead in the workforce. I'm Sigourney, and ladies, if you're still looking for Mr. Wright, I'll explain why you needn't look any further than your own father. Gee, Sigourney, I'll be on the lookout for that thing. Yes, I think I will do. Well, I definitely will. Fabulous. Well, I think you'd agree that we've got a lot to enlighten you with tonight, so why don't we get started? Oh. G'day. After a hard day's work, there's nothing sweeter than a relaxing massage to soothe the tensions and worries that are part of daily working life. But it's not always possible to get a massage at home, and massage parlours are seedy. It's hard to find one that actually gives you a massage. So, tonight, I'm going to show you how to build your very own home massage device. Simply buy a couple of old washing machines. I picked these up through the trading post for only 25 bucks each. Now, there's no need to hook these babies up to a water supply, but you will have to hook all of them up to the same power board. Then, simply set all the machines to spin and put the mattress on top of the machines. Oh, oh, this is great. Now, you can vary the intensity of the vibrations by placing heavier clothes in the machines. For a more intensive ride, simply unbalance the loads. And now, when your special lady friend comes over, start the cycle from the very beginning and let it build up to the spin. And I can promise it'll feel like the earth really did move. Oh. At this very moment, countless refugees are landing on our shores. Driven by panic and despair, risking everything in one last desperate grab for a better life. And as a result of this human horror, innocent children are suffering from all sorts of emotional problems. And as modern Australian women, we can't let this happen because there is something we can all do to help. Firstly, take some calico and draw up a small human shape. Then cut two of these out and sew them together, making sure you leave a small hole. And then fill it with soft stuffing. And sew it shut. done. Isn't it darling? It's a faceless Amish doll. It's the type of doll used to educate children at Steiner schools. Having no face helps children develop their imagination by letting them project the human features they feel comfortable with onto the doll. So by giving your children this doll, they'll be able to project this faceless image onto the faces of refugees. Once they can see them as a faceless mass rather than individual strangers, our children, like us, can look forward to a less scary tomorrow. It really is an investment in not just your child's education, but Australia's future. Amber, for God's sake, stop slouching and sit up straight. You two get him. You'll end up looking like the hunchback of Notre Dame. Bad posture is not only detrimental to growing bones and cartilage, it creates an impression of a slovenly personality that can adversely affect a young person's chances in the job market or the social scene in general. Amber! Kieran! You're doing it again! I said sit up strat! But like so many breakthroughs in the history of chiropractic treatment, an exciting new breakthrough has come from an unexpected source. Colin here is a drug courier, and what customs officers have noticed from scrutinising airport surveillance videos is that those sallow-skinned, sweaty and unhealthy drug couriers walk erect with excellent posture. And why? 
their body cavities have been packed to the brim with condoms filled with cocaine or heroin, making it now well impossible to tilt the body forward more than 5 degrees off the perpendicular from above the waist. Kirim and Amber may take a little convincing, but a little discomfort and wincing now will pay off big time later. An hour or two a day for about three months should convince the muscle memory that you mean business. And when Kirin walks tall into the boardroom and Amber becomes a supermodel, they'll have you to thank, spinally speaking. Bye now. If you're a mum who wants to get back into the workforce without the guilt of leaving your infant in an impersonal creche environment, the answer, as always, is on the street. It's called busking. Now, the public are sick to the back teeth with mimes, didgeridoo players and poncy little brats playing violins and flutes. But you have a natural gift, breastfeeding. As any Hollywood mogul will tell you, tits never hurt a show. Because this is fairly cutting edge stuff, it might take a while for the public to cotton on to what's going on. You may need to make it clear that you're working in the busking genre. So, I've chosen a statue of the Madonna and Child. Just be careful to keep the silver paint away from the actual nipple area, as it is highly toxic. And sick as we are as a society, we're not yet prepared to pay good money to see a dead baby. And the good bit is, the child will be exposed to the ethics of the marketplace a good 14 years before it will be working at Macca's. How character forming can that be? See ya. No, I don't think it's acceptable. I don't, I don't think it's very hygienic too and it's not um, very nice with someone sitting at another table who's not a family, who doesn't have a family, doesn't have commitments to actually be looking at something like that. If a baby's crying then and it needs to be fed and it's only being breastfed then it needs to be fed so I'm all for it. I think it's disgraceful actually. I think that there is a very close bond between a mother and a child and that that should be kept between the two of them. Um, you know, if, if it's if you know you're going out for a day and that, that you're going to have to feed your child, make a bottle. It's like me flopping up, you know, against the wall and go, oh, I've got to go to the toilet. It's, it's like, it's... I mean, come on, man, we're humans, we're not animals, you know. Um, I don't know, a breast is a breast, a penis is a penis. Same thing goes, you know. Todd, mate, what's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. Not a ghost, Sigourney. A mime. What? A mime. There was a mime in the background of Penny's segment. So? Well, I just don't like mimes, Sigourney. I really don't. Oh, Todd, no one likes mimes. But I've never seen anyone react quite like this about them before. Yeah, well, you just don't know. Oh, it's just... My third true love was romanced away from me by a mime. Oh, you poor thing. Do you know what it does to a man's self-esteem to lose a girl to a mime? It just cuts you up so bad. I can only imagine. But let's move on to something more uplifting. What you need is a good laugh. Yeah, it'll take quite a bit to get me to laugh. Maybe not, because Dr Rudy's next segment is about how to get guaranteed laughs and how to get back that self-esteem. Oh. He says... Give me the six grand or I'll rip your partitions out. <laughs> so you got the uh, promotion? Yeah, you oh, no, yeah. yeah. Meet Kane. Kane here is a successful young merchant banker force tracking his whack to a future fortune. He only has one problem in his life. He thinks he is funny. Unfortunately, nobody laughs at his jokes. His humour is puerile and hopeless. His self-esteem is in ruins. So unless he plans on changing his career by becoming an advertising copywriter, he is going to need my professional psychological help. This is a set of very small yet extremely powerful speakers. This is a mini disc player. On it, I've recorded a personal laugh track for Kane. That's right, a laugh track. A laugh track, or canned laughter, is a trick that television producers have used since the 50s to let an audience know if a television show is funny. He says, give me my six grand or I'll rip your partitions out. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Look at that. Kane can be funny after all. 50 psychology together with 21st century technology. Another winning combination from Dr. Rudy. <laughs> Oh, g'day. You know, one of the most frustrating things about being an artist is that more often than not, your artwork doesn't get the recognition it deserves until long after you're dead. That's why I reckon you should take a tip from Todd and get the recognition and reward your art deserves right now by having your work of art signed by a terminally ill person. There you go, that's the spot right there. Thanks, mate. And there you have it, a top tip to turbocharge your struggle for artistic and financial freedom. Hey, Alwyn, do you reckon you could hang on a tick while I do another? <laughs> Excuse me for a minute, I'll be right back. I'll be right here waiting for you. How on earth did cigar smoking become fashionable again? A lot of the men that I mingle with think that smoking a $50 cigar that's been lit with a piece of cedar really impresses me. Well, it does, but the trouble is that cigar breath is not very inviting. And if you intend to take the relationship further at the end of the night, well, it's bad enough having to smell their bad breath without having to taste it. Thank you. So, here's what you have to do. Just severely scold your tongue. That way, your taste buds will be completely numb, so you won't be able to smell or taste anything. True, you could just ask him to use mouthwash, but that'll just make him feel self-conscious. And ladies, the end of the night is not when you want to make him feel awkward. So, what are we talking about? You know, Babysitting is a totally dope way to make some dollars. And anyone can do it. But like some of my friends reckon they couldn't handle it. What do you do with a five-year-old? How do you keep them occupied? Well, it's all in the preparation. You see, kids just dig doing craft. So, here's a tip to help you get through those long hours of babysitting. Firstly, you'll need heaps of these. And secondly, you'll need a ton of this. Kids are so into the stupid, repetitive nature of craft. And egg cartons are perfect because they're big and easy to use. Good on you, hi. And when they get tired, and let me tell you, they always do, then you're ready for phase two. Hi. Hi. Oh, guess that's the end of craft then. And there's still three hours of babysitting left to go. But don't worry, you won't have to put up with this for long. As anyone in the recording industry will tell you, egg cartons make choice sound insulators. <laughs> Little High can scream to his heart's content and the neighbours and I won't hear a thing. Oh, now the time will just fly. Oh. And it's a good idea to have an egg carton dinosaur ready to show his parents when they come to pick him up, just so they can see how well you've kept their little treasure occupied. Plus, they'll get why he's so scared of egg cartons. See you, hi. Sure, now my bedroom walls are covered with egg cartons, but think of it this way. The next time I have a guy in there, I'll be able to give him the feedback he needs to continue to please without worrying about generating a soundscape for the neighbours. See ya. Well, Sigourney, I must say, I'm looking forward to our little break. We undertook quite a tour solving the problems of the nation. Yes, we did, Dr Rudy, but it was unbelievably rewarding work. So, what do you have planned for our time off? Oh, nothing too exciting. I'll probably take the boat up north. Oh, a lovely time to be going. And I'm seriously thinking of trying Everest again. So what about you, my dear? Any plans? Well, I have a couple of personal projects I'd like to spend some time on. Really? Well, we shan't keep you from them for too much longer. Because here's Todd 
back in the kitchen and ready to show you all how to prepare a tantalizing treat. Today I'm going to show you how to make something a little bit special. Japanese tempura. Tempura is made from a selection of delicacies that have been coated in an extremely delicate and light batter, then deep fried till they're incredibly crisp. They are delicious and relatively easy to make. Now, tempura batter, unlike stodgy fish and chip batter, is made by mixing a bag of this with some ice cold water. Now, you can find this at any Asian specialty food store. But if you don't have one of them handy, you can whip up something almost as good with some flour, iced water, and egg whites. Traditionally, tempura is made with thinly sliced vegetables or seafoods, but you can use anything you like. And since meat is so highly prized in Japan and so affordable here, I've chosen to tempura these. Just lightly coat them in the batter, letting the excess drain off, then deep fry them for one to two minutes. Notice the way the batter thins out, becoming almost transparent so you can see the treat inside. Oh, it just looks so appetising. Then drain it for a minute to remove the excess oil. It's healthier that way. Now, to eat these, you're gonna need some Japanese chopsticks. I don't know about you, but I find using two a little bit of a struggle. So I'm gonna do it the Australian way and just use the one. And there you have it, a Japanese tempura treat that's easy to make and even easier to eat. I've been getting stacks of emails lately from kids who are fed up with all the homework teachers keep dumping on them. I mean, what's the point of getting an education when it cuts into your TV watching time? But of course, comparatively, you're lucky. I mean, there are starving kids in the third world who would love to be in your position, but instead they have to work in sweatshops or scavenge through rubbish dumps for food. So it seems to me the solution is obvious. You should help these underprivileged children by outsourcing your homework. That's right. Get yourself a World Vision sponsor child and FedEx them your assignments. Be sure to include a return self-addressed envelope. And by sending them just a few assignments a day, you're allowing a starving child to live vicariously through your education. Of course, you might want to put some thought into the type of child you're sending your homework to. If you're outsourcing maths and physics, get World Vision to find you an Asian kid with glasses. If you want a child who can write a controversial general studies essay on America's sponsorship of state terrorism, Find a Nicaraguan, Kurdish or Palestinian kid. It'll read uncannily like Chomsky. At the end of the day, if you have a crisis of conscience about exploiting the child, we'll just get them to invoice you. Because at 12 cents an hour, it's cheap at twice the price. See ya. As a modern woman, it's important to be very selective when you choose your friends. After all, your friends' friends are the pool of people that you're most likely to have sex with. So, if you want a healthy sex life with men who have a healthy bank balance, then my advice is to befriend your father. It makes perfect sense. After all, your father has much more eligible friends than you do. They have money, heart conditions, and unattractive menopausal wives, making them right for the picking. And men that are much older are fantastically fun to reel in. Because they're so easy, there's absolutely no need to be subtle. Oh, Uncle Roberto, I'd just love to go for a ride in your big old Mercedes. Shall we? Absolutely. One of the best things about these older family men is there's plenty of room in their bigger family cars. Room you'll need to help them reassess their family values. Maybe after he's fully funded a fabulous night out. So you see, ladies, your daddy really is your best friend. I've only been socialising with mine for two hours and I'm already having a fabulous time. How's it? Dr Rudy here. Men, are you married? Has your wife started to worry about your health and especially your diet? If she has, then you're in quite a predicament. 
because her concerns and constant nagging about what you eat will mean no more fats, no more dairy, less red meat and far less alcohol for you. But don't worry, there is a way for you to indulge in all the things you like, whenever you like. All you have to do is learn how to cook. That's right, men. If you get in the kitchen and learn how to cook, you will be able to eat and drink anything you like. You see, your wife will be so grateful that you are relieving her burden by doing the cooking that she won't care what you are cooking. Terry here has been using this technique for quite a while now and has never been happier. And why wouldn't he be? For dinner tonight, he's made cassoulet, a classic French casserole of duck, bacon, sausage and beans cooked in goose fat. Delicious! And when he serves this to his wife, instead of chastising him for the cholesterol content of the meal, she'll simply think that making such a fine feast just for her deserves a decent bottle of wine. Maybe two. Furthermore, a good meal coupled with some excessive alcohol consumption may be just the thing to rekindle your passions, which in turn will provide you with all the exercise you'll need. Bon appetit now. Look at these. You might think they're a total toss at 200 bucks, but don't knock them till you've worn them. And if you know what I'm talking about, you'd probably kill for a pair of shoes like these. Well, you don't have to, because I've found the perfect way to pick up the latest in streetwear, and it won't cost you a thing. All you have to do is head down to an inner city train line. You see, graffiti artists who tag trains always wear the latest and coolest in street gear. But train tagging is a dangerous art, especially when the artist leans out too far from a moving train. Like this one here. Ooh, Adidas. And they look like my size. No one's going to miss them. I mean, they've got to be removed to tie a tag to his toe anyway. And if you don't do it, some morgue attendant probably will. Admittedly, the best time to do this sort of shopping is at dusk. The light's low, visibility's poor, and it's not late enough for anyone to realise that this former fashion junkie is missing. But any time will do. They're a bit big, but some thick socks will fix that. So there you go. You don't have to kill for the latest in streetwear. You just have to know where to shop. See ya. Well, I can't believe it. But here we are, not only at the end of tonight's show, but the end of another series. I know. Didn't time just fly by? But don't worry, Australia. We can be back for you if you let us know you still need us. Yeah. Be proactive, people. After all, your problems will probably persist, and harassment always pays off. That's right. But for now, as always, it's been a real pleasure. I know my practical advice has continued to make even more of you healthy, wealthy and happy. And remember, keep scamming the man, people. That way your life will always be just that little bit better. Being one who's not the best at long goodbyes, I'll simply say goodbye. And until we next meet, why not take flamenco dance lessons? And in the meantime, you little battlers keep fighting a good fight and remember to always be good to one another. And I hope we'll be back for you. Goodbye, Australia. Goodbye, Australia.